Welcome to jasonnewland.com Just testing out this new thing um, Basically uh, this is Let me bore you to sleep number 73 I think I've got this new light which is shining on me and the idea is that you get a better picture so I'm kind of playing around with it at the moment and for some reason I think that seems to be the best picture I don't know and also I don't know this is whole I'll play around with it till I get it right as I have done with other things over the years so the main thing is my glasses they're glaring and I don't like that keep my head down like that the whole time and I look so serious I can't move any further back without knocking stuff off and disturbing the neighbours I'll try and push this back a bit that's a better picture I think the further back I am the better so I might need to look at getting some uh, some kind of anti-glare glasses because these are supposed to be anti-sun glasses not not anti-sun you know like prejudiced but um, and not the opposite to sunglasses but like anti-glare so that the sun UVC whatever so the the, sh the, the lenses go brown or grey when I'm outside in the sun or even in a winter's day however having this thing shining on me it's not really it's not really doing it for me and also I can see there where the wall is is a little bit grainy bugging me it's just cost me money this house I just bought it literally today I got it delivered what about that is that better thing is I don't I can't take my glasses off well, I can but um, I need glasses it's just it's the same way as um, I wouldn't take my hearing aids off if I had hearing aids just because it might look a bit better although I don't think I look better without glasses um, or with really it's kind of a kind of a neutral thing Oh, disappointing. I was hoping for so much more. Let's try that. Oh well. Yeah, I'm not madly crazy about this actually. Let's see if I can get it brighter. Oh, there you go. So it seems to be all right. One part of the camp, one part of the thing. That's strange. Anyway, um, most people listening to this will be listening on the podcast anyway, so you're probably not that bothered about what the picture looks like. And uh, only listen to this if you can safely close your eyes because it's going to be boring and 
you're going to want to close your eyes and just say, oh, oh no, I can't keep my eyes open anymore because the words and the stories and the pointlessness of what Jason is saying is just causing my eyelids to get heavier and heavier. So, not heavier, but heavier. This chair is now creaking. I wonder if I put weight on. It's, it's, it's not so much that the chair is creaking, it seems to be moaning. It's like, oh no, no. So I don't know if it's uh, an unhappy chair. I don't know. So I'm feeling a bit tired, but not tired, tired, proper tired, but a little bit tired which is okay. Um, I find that if I'm not tired before I do a sleep session, then I usually am once I start doing it. There's something about um, I don't know, something about being tired. This is a boring conversation, isn't it? Even for me, it's, there's different levels of boring for me. Sometimes I will say something and it bores me, but not in a not in a relaxing way, but just in a kind of just. This is just a bunch of words. Can you hear my boiler? There's something wrong with my boiler. It's, it does not sound particularly healthy, which is worrying because we're coming towards the cold area, the cold period. Um, it's the first week in January, it's the fourth today. And I'm just thinking, oh, no, I don't really care about the weather or the temperature when I'm outside because it's January, it's supposed to be cold. However, when I'm inside, that's a different story. Now let me tell you about it. Right, I'm just gonna move around, see whether or not the chair, I'm a bit worried. How weird would it be if this chair just collapsed while I'm talking to you live? So this is a live book, Facebook, a live book, a live Facebook stream, but it's a bit easier to do it that way, but I might stop doing the live streams and just do the podcast. So, you know, uh, I still put it on YouTube, but I'll make a video. So I'll record it on my uh, recorder still using the microphone and all that stuff and then converting it into like an hour long video with a bit like the deep sleep ones which has a candle and sort of make a nice video and just have kind of the same video for each video for each let me boy to sleep but with a different audio you know connected That's what I might do. Another thing that I'm intending to do, all being well, is, let me see if this makes a difference. Oh, it does. Actually having the laptop behind, look at that, it's just so bright though. Well, we're gonna have the lenses in my, shining in my glasses, so there's not a lot I can do about that. Unless you're willing to pay for me to go and get some lenses that, you know, anti-glare, or if there is such a thing. There's not really a lot I can do about it at the moment. Um, normally I have a light over there shining on, but I kind of, 
the fact that I've spent money particularly for this setup. This is like my Christmas money, kind of, you know, if I was 10. And this is, you know, this is actually, I don't use the word professional because it's not proper, but it's, it's a, uh, it's basically set, it's a YouTube setup for people making videos for YouTube or live streaming. Um, I don't have a picture on the box. The box is just a plain brown box. Otherwise I could have shown you a picture of it. I don't even know what it's called. I should have done an unboxing, shouldn't I? Oh, but uh, I didn't. So I've got uh, another thing I've got coming this week. Should have got them yesterday, but I didn't. Is a bunch of batteries that go into the microphone. That's among the most boring things I've probably ever said. Uh, this little microphone here takes those little tiny, like disc batteries, and the problem with them is I don't know how long they're going to last. I don't know, are they gonna run out midstream so I'm talking and then suddenly you can't hear nothing? Which bugs me a little bit, I don't want that to happen. Um, so I bought like a lot of them and I'm just gonna use one a week or something. Uh, or one, one every two weeks, you know, just change it so that I'm never sort of cut short. Also, I've got an adapter for this so that it fits into the camera. Because this is a camera, this is a, a camera microphone as well as I've got an adapter for uh, the iPhone as well. So hopefully, tomorrow, I should get that adapter through and I'll be able to play with it and see whether or not I can start making some videos. Um, with the camera which is just behind me just there it's a really good camera and it was bought for me in part by some of my fans on youtube and facebook and you know online so i do i have used it it's just um getting the sound was a problem uh, because the, the picture's really good the sound on the camera is not so good i bought a boom thing camera on top um, microphone rather and even that wasn't great um, that cost me 150 pound uh, they got I can connect the road cam uh, microphones as well but it's like they're right in my face the, the microphones is a bit too intrusive out of all the cat mic I keep saying camera out of all the microphones I've had this is probably my favorite because it's it's just there you know, it's out of the way, providing I haven't got a tight t-shirt and my beard's not rubbing against it. It's unintrusive and I like that and it's good quality sound and it took me a long time to find this. I did a lot of research online to find this thing um, because it sounds like lies but it's true. I went, I don't normally do that but I went through and you know, read loads of reviews and stuff. It's the only cheap thing, but it took ages to find one. But there you go. So my plan with the other camera is to start making like 20 minute videos. Sort of, because I can't do anything more than half an hour with the camera. So, um, I'm gonna just play around with it, but start making some videos using that as well. And um, see, so yeah, I'm quite looking forward to that because the good thing with that is no uploading necessary because uh, it it's got a SIM card, not a SIM card, a data card or what? You know what? You know the card um, storage card or whatever you call it. 
so I can just take it out of there, plug it into my laptop, upload the file, and then just do some editing work and it's done. If I make a half hour video on my camera on the phone, it can take like a couple of hours to upload sometimes. And I have to upload it to YouTube, then, or Facebook, then download it again, and then convert it, and then edit it. At least with this, I'll be able to edit it as a file. Um, the original file, so it should be better quality. In fact, the quality is a little bit too good in some time, some ways. But shouldn't really complain about that, should I? So yesterday, I didn't. Um, I didn't make one session. Not one. Zero. And on my calendar, so I've got a calendar for Christmas, and I'm just using it to write down the amount of sessions that I've recorded uh, each day. My aim really is three a day. So far on the 1st I did one, on the 2nd of January I did two, the 3rd of January I did zero. So in order to make it out three, I need to do nine today. Do you reckon that's gonna happen? No, it's not. So um, it's okay, I mean two a day is 720, whatever, 730 a year. But I wanna do a thousand this year. But I'm looking to maybe do some courses as well. So there might be a few 30 day courses that I'm gonna like do and then upload all at one go or maybe daily I don't know it depends some shorter sessions so not everything I do is going to be long an hour long there will be some shorter things so maybe like 10 minutes 15 18 20 minutes so I've been online I've been doing a bit of research on face on YouTube and a lot of the channels the it's not that many hypnosis channels on YouTube really but the ones that are on there a lot of them are doing like an 18 minute video so I tend to maybe perhaps do a little bit maybe they're a bit too long some of my stuff perhaps I don't know so that's the plan, that's the plan. Yesterday I went with a friend to uh, a meeting that he had, it was just kind of, I suppose, emotional support. But I didn't just, yeah, it was just a long, 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 long day. And I had it all planned as far as, because uh, I'm up most, you know, during the night, most nights. Uh, working on a website and making videos and stuff like that. I had to be up by 11 o'clock in the morning, which meant really I needed to be in bed by like three or four. And, but I didn't kind of do that. So I didn't leave myself, didn't really get a lot of sleep. But it was my choice. I mean, you know, I could have gone to bed earlier. But I was... I was in the flow, you know, I was working on the website and I was quite pleased with what I was doing. So I was, and I was listening to Amazon music. So I was, I had some uh, albums playing. Uh, what was I listening to? I can't remember now. What's that one that says, sail away with me, baby? Do, 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 do. Sail away with me, honey, now. Ow, 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 ow. And to someone else. Anyway, I was listening to their albums, and I really like their albums. One was, in fact, one Craig, not David, David Hay. Is it David? David Craig? David? 
not Craig David, but David Gray. Yeah, David Gray. White Ladders or White Ladder. So I was listening to his album. I listened to his album second out of the two that I listened to. And it was already saved on there from the last time that I was on that site listening to albums. So that was sort of, I guess, one of my favorite ones. Not listened to it for ages. So the reason I like it is because back in, I don't know if it was 1999 or 2000, I think it was, must have been 2000, I kind of fell in love with that album. And I used to, I was very, very into building websites during that year. And I used to listen to the, to the David Gray album pretty much every night for many, many months. And uh, yeah, just, just love it. There's another album I used to have. It's a, I don't know if it was a, like a best of hits, not not of a group, but like a maybe, like a, um, now that's what I call music, kind of album. But it might it might have been one of them actually, but it was you know, in two thousand, time, because I think they release I think two a year I think. Maybe they release one a year, but they also do release kind of like Christmas versions and now that's what I call rock music and that's what I call music to listen to whilst eating popcorn on your own, you know, things like that. So I, see I'm one of the people that had the very first album of now that's what I call music. And I'm not sure if it was called number one because I'm not sure whether or not they knew it was going to be popular enough to produce a second album. And the different, this is something, a bit of trivia, you may not be aware of. Before, now that's what I call music, it generally wasn't much in the way of compilation albums of hits through the year. What they used to have, this is totally true, they used to be albums, and I'm closing my eyes now because of that light. They used to be albums called Top of the Pops, named after the TV show. And the, I'm gonna turn this light off. I've had enough of it. Doesn't really make any difference, does it? It's a waste of time, absolute waste of time. Oh dear, oh dear, oh well. That doesn't matter, does it? Actually it is probably better with the light on. Oh well, I'll just keep my eyes closed. No, I don't like the light on me and on. If I can turn it down a bit. Bear in mind, let's bear, bear me. Okay, right. See the pictures, that's, that's all right, isn't it? Okay, so there used to be these albums called Top of the Pops, and it'd have all the hits from the previous year. Um, trying to think, I suppose, such as Adam and the Ants and, you know, uh, ELO and whatever. But they'd have a completely different band playing the songs different singers, not the original singers, I guess because then they didn't have to pay 
the royalties or as much royalties as actually having the actual singers. So Top of the Pops albums, they made loads of them through the 70s, even like in the 80s. And then now that's what I call music came out. I'm not saying it was the first compilation albums for hits uh, at all, but it was like the main one. And it still is really, isn't it, I guess. And unless you go for a genre, genre like R&B or soul or but I had the very first album Let Me Boy no it wasn't called Let Me Boy You To Sleep that's what this is called um, the very first album was now that's what I call music one but I think it was number two that was my favourite and I used to listen to it I had it on tape and I'd listen to it while I was doing my because I had quite a few paper rounds or paper routes depending on how you um, describe such things but I think the, the one that I used to really enjoy listening to the music most on was the one where I was walking around so I had a trolley like an old I don't want to say old person's trolley but it was like an old fashioned uh, basket trolley it was quite sturdy and it held you know, thousands of leaflets and I pretty much I'd have maybe 10,000 to deliver and I'd listen to this album it was like a double album maybe four, four tapes even I don't remember and it would be I just play each side and just continuously repeat, you know. And oh, I loved it. I think one of the songs was U2's New Year Day. So it gives you an idea how far back. Probably 1982 ish. And I probably got the tape for Christmas or might have been a birthday present or I might have bought it myself I don't recall I do know once though I had a when I was working in the bakery in the bakehouse at Cordy's when I was about 13 I had a I don't know why because I worked there in the summer don't know why but I had this kind of obsession for buying these top trump cards of all varieties bearing in mind top trunks top top trumps not top trunks I could go either way couldn't it, it could be elephants or swimming but top trumps and I had so many different packs and they were little in these little plastic little plastic cases and they'd cost maybe a pound or two pound each maybe less maybe 50 pence each it's a long time ago and I just became a little bit obsessed with them and it's a game that you play with other people really and I didn't have anyone else to play with or I should have I didn't have anyone that wanted to play with me with top trumps it was it was like a collection and I honestly don't know why and I'd buy them on the way home from work so I'd be starting work and during the summer um, I might be working every day of the week during the summer every morning and I'd start at six maybe let's say for example on a Tuesday I'd start at six finish at midday or one o'clock I can't remember get paid two pound fifty or three pound or four whatever I earned on that day and because what we used to do is 
I think I got about 75 pence an hour. 75 pence an hour? Or was it 70 or 80? It was about that, it was, it was under a pound an hour, about 70, 75 pence an hour. So I do six hours, or yeah, about six or seven hours. And I go and get paid. So what we used to do is, the front of the restaurant, so if you go in, um, if you've listened to previous videos or audios or whatever, had this hill called Bent Hill. So you used to go down there, turn right, and basically if you go down the hill ac across is where the sea was. Well, it's, it's still there, the, sea's, the sea is still there, it hasn't moved. Um, but on the right hand side is the restaurant. It's no longer called what it was. Uh, different ownership now. But we used to go in there and on the left hand side was, uh, it was kind of, there was a till and like a shop counter. And that's where they used to sell all the bread and the cakes and all that stuff. And also kind of welcome people as they came in to sit down for dinners. So that's where I used to uh, get paid. So I'd go to the till, tell them what hours I'd done and they'd just pay me I don't know how much it would work out, 75 pence for six hours, whatever, I don't know. It would be £7.50 for 10 hours, so half of that, three, four, so about £4 or something like that. And so I'd have that money and four, eight. I did all right, really, if you think, because I had that job. I probably, yeah, I'd have had my evening paper round job as well. Plus the the weekly or fortnightly leaflet delivery and then the monthly leaflet delivery. So I had quite a few like little jobs. So I guess it all added up. Um, I wish I'd invested the money really. in stocks and shares. Can you imagine though, if I'd have, if I'd have been able to just put money and bought some Apple shares back in, you know, early 80s. Not that I probably, I don't know if I'd been able to afford to buy them or even legally be able to buy them then, but I imagine that'd be so cool. But, uh, yeah, I had these jobs, but I don't know why I got so, got so uh, really a bit obsessed with those little card games. Because there used to be this shop, and you know, I talk about going down the town centre, which leads to Bent Hill. So if you go, let's say if you go out of the restaurant that I used to work in, where the bakehouse was in the back, uh, where the kitchen also was in the back. The, so if you go out the main door, or you could go out of the, the back door because the entrance to the bakehouse was a separate thing. So it was to the left. It looked, it was more wood, uh, like a wooden fence, you'd walk in and there'd be a, like a little yard out there with, if I remember rightly, it was concrete. But then you'd go in and the, the bakehouse would be kind of there. And then, you know, if you go in to the left, that's where they were doing the baking and the ovens and everything. And then you turn right and you go up a couple of steps, or it might have been down a couple of steps, I can't remember. That's where the kitchen was, the main kitchen for the restaurant. And then, so if you walk out, you can turn right and there'd be, I think, two doors going in and out of the restaurant. Or there might have been one door. But it was like a swirly, swivelly door, you know, that opened both ways. 
and go up a little bit further on the left that's where the kitchen like not the kitchen the sink and the washing up area was where is where I used to work when I first started working there and um, yeah so if you go out because you know in I remember it's a Saturday and Sunday mornings that was when I mainly worked when I was at the bakery and you know during like school time so on a Saturday I don't know how on earth I got out of bed but I did and I a Saturday I'd start at 6 Sunday I'd start at 5 so Saturday I'd probably get up at 5 in the morning have my breakfast and just walk slowly down my road so I'd go out I'd come out of the house turn left walk down I think it depended of how yeah I've got this memory that I would walk down Bent Hill but sometimes I'd go down maybe the garden area and just walk down the steps depending on probably depending on the weather depending on the time of year depending upon how you know how I was doing for time and if I was early if I was because they didn't get there early they were you know the the owner would open the doors kind of on time like six o'clock or whoever or, you know whoever opened the doors so sometimes you'll be waiting for them to get there so if it was a nice day or nice morning I'd perhaps walk on the beach and just have a little little sort of I don't know just slow walk across the the water line you know which is pretty beautiful I love the sea I love the smell of the sea I love the the feeling of the the breeze I love the sea like the spray on my face uh, like the sound of the sea it's and looking at it it's like kind of all senses it's just it's just something about the sea that I've always really enjoyed and so as I'm sometimes I'd walk across there but I'd only be on the bit of the beach that was opposite the restaurant so I didn't like get carried away and end up walking, you know, 10 miles or anything like that. And then I could, sometimes I'd sit on the, because I used to have these breakers, these like concrete, um, I don't know what they were, they kind of, I think they were put in during the war, during the war and to stop boats from, you know, to because they were under the water and whatever, I don't know. But sometimes I'd sit on them and so I could look at the sea, but then I'd like look around maybe every few minutes just to see whether or not uh, the gate had been opened to the bakehouse so that I could go and start working. So I, I suppose sometimes I might just sit and just look at the at the gate. Sometimes I perhaps spend a bit more time just looking at the sea. But I think there was times when I'd go in and just stand outside the gate at the bakehouse and perhaps have a little chat with the people that are waiting. But it's a bit early in the morning to really talk. But I do recollect maybe doing that and looking at the inside the window of the restaurant and seeing all the empty spaces where the cakes would eventually be in a few hours' time and all the loaves of bread that smelled beautiful. 
and how the whole window would look lovely, be full of these freshly baked items. This is what I used to do. This is, uh, I didn't actually, I did a little bit of the baking, I didn't do much. Occasionally I was allowed to sort of knead some bread and but a lot of it was like oiling up the tins and doing the um, lifting and moving stuff around and when the um, when the bread was finished you know it came out of the oven it was put into the onto trays and then into like plastic yeah, like plastic trays, and then we carry them all the way through the kitchen and into the restaurant, and all the way into the the door. You know, the the front of the restaurant where the bread could be stacked. I didn't usually do the stacking of the bread. I don't think, but when it came to the cakes, and there was a few specific cakes. I can't remember what they were. And they used to, <laughs> between leaving the bakehouse, the bakery, and arriving into the restaurant area where they were going to be sold, it was like a Bermuda Triangle. They just seemed to, some of them seemed to disappear into my tummy. And um, not lots, but you know, by about 10 o'clock, I was hungry because I'd, I'd eaten at like five and I'd been working and quite physical. And um, oh, it tasted so good. I think that's scones. I'll tell you one of my favorite things to do and it took a while before I was allowed to do it. But uh, filling the donuts with jam. I was allowed to fill the, it was like the, I can imagine, I know what it feels like for someone to be, to finally get the, the job of their dreams you know, to work hard and finally get that, I don't know, to become a partner in a, in a firm or something, you know. That's how I felt when I was suddenly said, told that, Jason, the person that normally fills the donuts with jam is not in today, so you're gonna have to do it. And I was like, oh, 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 it's brilliant, I'm so happy. And so the whole thing is the, because it has to be done. Well, if I saw there, I'm not sure if they're, yeah, I'm pretty much sure the jam goes in first and then they get rolled around in sugar. I think, unless they get rolled around in sugar first. No, that wouldn't make sense because then you wouldn't be able to hold them. So the jam, I, you know, we're only supposed to put one, one squirt of jam, because it's like a thing, because there was hundreds of these things. So you just like push down on the lever and the jam would push like one big dollop in. I used to put two. Sometimes I'd put two and a half dollops. And a part of it was like generosity, you know, I just wanted to give people a nice, uh, a nice little surprise. But I think maybe the little um, cheeky side of me quite like the idea of a regular customer who used to perhaps come in, just buying one like normal and then biting into it and being completely covered in jam, not realizing. <laughs> so, After a while of doing that, I got told off, so I had to go and just do one 
one dollar per jam and the eventually I was allowed to actually um, I'm not sure if I made I helped to make the donuts uh, I can't it's like pastry or something isn't it so I helped to make the to put it into the mixer and stuff and then make them into little balls and then put them into the frying we had this, these fryers similar to what you fry chips in if you was in a um, not a chip shop because that would be a lot bigger but in a like a restaurant kind of thing where you make, make, make chips with a little basket and um, yeah I remember because it's one of those things because I've, I've fried a lot of things over the years in jobs that I've had it's one of those things where when they float they're ready like fish is like that um, it kind of lets you know when it's ready it's been a long time since I've fried fish but I did it for two years and uh, it's one of those skills that I don't know if it would come back well I'm sure it would come back if I got a job in a chip shop I could um, get back those skills because I remember it's, you know you do something so many times like putting um, putting batter on a fish and then like replace putting it and then just putting it onto the on into the frying oil but you have to do it in a certain way so it's flat and it took you know I did probably thousands of them so I imagine that that, that skill is well, if you want to call it a skill, is still there. It's not really a skill if you don't use it, or if it's not useful, I suppose. But it's a long time ago. Such a long time. So yeah, I used to have the... I don't know about this light, though, being shining. Might have to get another one in try that out because I've seen on yeah I've seen online like on YouTube videos and even uh, documentaries about YouTubers and they have a phone and they have this light behind the phone but the phone's kind of in the middle um, but maybe a lot of people don't wear glasses so that's the thing if I wasn't wearing glasses it probably wouldn't matter how bright the bright was apart from to my eyes it's too bright for, you know a bit a little bit too bright for my eyes so my eyes just want to close which is why they are closed and that's Andre doing you don't want to know what he's doing just brush the microphone with my beard again so yeah yesterday was a bit of a strange day I got back I was tired because I hadn't really had a lot of sleep and I watched telly for a little bit then I went and laid down then I got up and I laid down a bit more got up and like you know it kind of just it um, threw me off I didn't get anything done that I would like to have done um, yesterday at all uh, as far as you know the online stuff that I do that's okay I suppose it doesn't really matter it's only one day As long as it doesn't happen every day. I'm not sure if doing three a, a day is possible. 
I mean, it's physically possible, I suppose, if I was doing 10 minutes. So I can't do a 10 minute video on, you know, relaxation video, a 10 minute chronic pain relief video, a 10 minute insomnia session, a 10 minute ASMR whisper session. And if I just recorded them live and they're uploaded instantly, maybe did them on YouTube and streamed them, I probably could do like five, six, seven, maybe 10 a day. I don't think I could manage that, but just as an example, I probably do quite a lot. But then there'd be no introductions, there'd be no editing, there'd be no, you know, because once I've made a session, there's then the, you know, getting the audio out of it, posting that MP3 up to the podcasts, promoting the podcasts, and then making a page on my website where that podcast is available to download for free. And see this, you know, embedding the video and the MP3 into the same page so people can stream them as well as download for free. And yeah, it's just quite a lot of uh, stuff involved in this. And that's without the promotional side and the never ending website work but it's okay it's uh, oh, I sometimes think imagine if I could I don't know still have the same website that I had in 2007 still had the same YouTube channel in 2007 the same podcast although the podcast is it, it was deleted by the podcast host and they kind of stopped doing them but if I had you know like the original podcast that's still are available now on SoundCloud or my first Spreaker podcast that had loads and loads of downloads just be interesting to see where it would be now you know, as far as uh, interest of whether or not people would still be following and still be, um, just see where, if it grew, see how, how it grown during that time. Just, you know, I went onto a hypnosis website. I think it's Ultra Hypnosis. And they got something like 105 million views of their videos. I think it was that, it might be more, but about 100, maybe 150 million views. But it's like, wow, that's just a huge amount. And they've got a Patreon account, Patreon page, and they're getting about 8,000 a month from that. I don't know if it's dollars or pounds, I think it was dollars. And so that'd be what five thousand pounds. So it's it's not a bad amount, is it? Five thousand a month. So that's sixty grand a year. Is that right? Fifth five grand a month, ten, fifty, sixty, yeah. Sixty thousand a year. That's about, I mean, they're also selling merchandise. So I was thinking about that. I could sell merchandise, maybe have stuff with Andre on it. I don't know. I don't like this light shining in my face though. That's it, that's better. I've got quite sensitive eyes. I think it's that's why I've got the Actolite lenses because when I'm outside the sun 
although they didn't seem to be working very well today because it was quite sunny but it was also cold as well but they didn't they didn't seem to be working because it was just everything was like shining right in my eyes that's a better look just turned it off straight away I can look into the camera and but then the picture is quite grainy so that was I don't know how much that cost me I think it was I think the idea, what if the, I think the idea is this, is, ah, that's the camera, ah, I thought if, if the, if the, If it's close enough, then you wouldn't notice. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, I think that's kind of the thing where it should be shining brightly. <laughs> I think on that note, I'm going to end this because this is. Well, maybe it doesn't have to be shining right at me. Maybe having it there would be enough. Uh, I don't know. Not that exciting really, is it? But then it's not supposed to be. I think that was just a, another bit of waste of money. I might be able to find a use for it. If nothing else, I could probably just use it as a, as like a little lamp for the desk when I'm, you know, I'm on the computer, so have it shining down on the the laptop. Because I sometimes do find that at night I can see the screen fine, but the actual keys are a little bit. I kind of have to sort of, sort of strain a little bit to see what the keys say on the keyboard. So perhaps I could use this and shine it on the the keyboard have it like a bit lower light and that might make it a bit easier so it might be work it absolutely fine I'm in no way excited about it though if I'm honest I went into a, uh, a shop like a supermarket today and I thought I wonder if they have started selling hot crust buns, hot, hot cross buns, as we're now in the Easter season, quite often in, you know, in January, suddenly it's, well, there's two things, isn't there? There's Valentine's and Easter. The two things that are kind of, promoted so was it Valentine's is in February I don't know what date that is and Easter is either end of March or April beginning of April time so that's a hot cross buns but I went in there and there was none there was none and I was really thinking oh I wonder if they have any hot cross buns. And I said to my friend, when I went out, because I did say to him as we were sort of walking towards the shop, and I thought, I'd quite like to get some hot cross buns. And because I like tea cakes, but I prefer hot cross buns because they're more, I just, they're nicer, they're fruitier. And I think that the 
some supermarkets understand that there are people such as myself who are big, big fans of hot cross buns and they do sell them all year round and the fruitier the better I love the more fruit I don't want it to be completely fruit I don't want it to I don't want it to be like a a bowl of breakfast cereal you know brand brand nut and brand and nut fruity loopy whatever it's called all bran or muesli I don't yeah I don't want to I don't want to stick in muesli into my toaster. But I do <laughs> muesli on toast. But a nice fruit, nice big bits of fruit, maybe even apricot and currants. Toasted and just, oh, beautiful. Hot cross buns. And there's something about, I think it, I might have talked about this before, Back in 1987, I moved into my first flat and my friend Neil was with me. Not when I moved in, but he came and visited me on, I think it was Good Friday, so it was a Friday before Christmas. And I was eating. I, because I moved in, but I think at that point I didn't have any furniture in there because or I might have had a bed or whatever, but it was, I hadn't really had much moved in yet. But I had the key and I, you know, I was living there. I didn't have any food really as, as such. Um, but what I did have was I was drinking a cup of tea. I probably made one for my friend. I can't remember and I had some hot cross buns because uh, we had a shop across the road from where I lived and so I must have bought them there and I was watching Wurzel Gummidge on television and that's what I remember from 1987 Good Friday, watching Wurzel Gummidge on probably BBC Two or something like that, whilst eating the hot cross buns and drinking a nice cup of tea. It might have been a cup of coffee, but I don't think I used to drink coffee back then. Although, wait a minute, I might have done. might have done I don't I don't recall I really don't recall if I was drinking coffee back then but that specific day I don't know it was definitely the hot cross buns quite often I saw I call them hot crust buns like hot crust I don't know why because and I suppose they are kind of bits of crust in them I suppose because bready they're doughy aren't they all, all dough when it's cooked has I suppose kind of a crust around it not the same as bread but something I mean the, the crust bit is a bit crusty a bit not crusty as in uh, needs putting in the washing machine or perhaps put in the bin and forgotten about but I mean like crusty as in like a different texture to the rest of the um, the item of edible product that you've had in front of you but then it is a separate thing it's a different it's it's a different thing that they put on it it's like a, I don't know, like a different kind of pastry that's put across it. So I used to work in, well, two bakeries. So I kind of, and also 
if you do bait, if you, I'm a bit of a connoisseur when it comes to hot cross buns. And if you look at them, they do, even when they're, before they're like even toasted, sometimes the, the top bits start to fall off and you can see it's been added separate. It's been added to the actual bun. So I think that's probably me for today. It's a bit of a weird lighting of this video. And as I said earlier, I'm thinking of just not doing these live anymore. Not doing them on video either. Maybe they'll be available on video, but it'll be a like a background moving image, like a candle or something like that, like my deep sleep whisper ones. And they'll the audio will still be available on the podcasts. Anyway, I'm gonna go for now. I wish you all the happiest, happiest day ahead and lots of love. See you later. Bye.